Hello guys, let's look at um, computer paper one, that is Sakena Premok. Um, and uh, we can just go and start on section A. Uh, section A usually consists of 40 marks. So answer all the questions in this section. What is disk formatting? One mark. So the answer expected here is the process of preparing a new disk for use by, imp uh, by imprinting empty tracks and sectors on the surface of the disk that can be recognized and accessed by a particular operating system. Rather, the preparation or initialization of a disk for storage of data. Both of those answers are correct. So disk formatting is basically preparing a new disk to allow storage of data. Indicate whether the following devices are used for input or output. So when you talk about a plotter, a plotter is an output device. Then right pen is used for input. Mouse is used for input. And then visual display unit, which is also the monitor, is used as an output device. Then we have question number two. Explain why the following controls should be implemented for computer-based system. Two marks, backups, and two, password. So, when we, we, we do backup, what is, the, uh, what is the consequence of this or result of this? Backups can be used to recover, restore, or prevent lost data. On the other hand, passwords are used to control access to computer systems or facilities. So both of these methods are used for security purposes. Question number three. How is a point of sale terminal used in a business organization? We call it EPOS. E-P-O-S. Two marks. So a uh, point of sale terminals is used for pricing the different types of commodities, that is for pricing is the keyword, can be used as a barcode reader, for checking stock levels, that is stock control, also for adding totals of purchase and calculating customer exchange, and also for reception product, uh, that's sorry, receipt production. Then we have distinguish between a compiler and an interpreter. This is form three. Uh, third topic, elementary programming principles. Those are the terminologies in the first page. So a compiler translates the entire program at once. So the difference between an interpreter and a translator here is that um, whenever you execute the program, the interpreter must uh, execute line by line, whereas a compiler translates the entire program at once. And for that case, saves on memory. Then we have the next part here. Explain why computers use binary numbers in data representation to max. This is first topic in form three, that is data representation. And for that case, computers use binary numbers because data is stored in computers in binary form. And therefore, the computer CPU carries arithmetic and logic operations by binary numbers. In other words, uh, we are saying that binary form is easily understood by the machine. This is because binary numbers has only the two digits, 0 and 1, which make it suitable for representing two states of on and off. So those are the two expected answers. Question number six. What is meant by the term dry running as used in program development? Two marks. This is again topic number three, elementary programming, and a subtopic pro uh, program development. So it's a method of checking a program for logical errors by making the corrections on a paper or from printouts. So basically dry run is going through the codes when still on paper. Question number seven, a computer teacher has put a rule that disketes should not be used in computer laboratory. A, give a reason for the rule, two marks. So basically, why do uh, your teachers 
uh, ask you not to carry removable gadgets to computer lab. So number one is to prevent the spread of viruses between the computers. Number two is, is to prevent an authorized copying of programs from or to the computer. Then student may carry immoral files using the disketes. Number two, state two alternatives that can be used to achieve the same objective. So number one uh, is using this uh, disgrace computers. That is, you can disable the uh, drivers, that is the, the drive, sorry, that is the readers. Use of antivirus software to detect and clean virus before use. Then we have number eight, fill in blank spaces in the table below the remarks. So we have uh, OBR, uh, the answers are in bold. So the application is reading barcodes in supermarket. OMR, that is optical mark reader, it's uh, for marking multiple choices exams, like KCP. Mike, that is a magnetic ink character reader. It's used for reading checks. The first one is optical bar reader. That is the barcode reader. Then we have during system analysis, information has to be gathered to enable the analyst understand the system and study. Explain two methods available to an analyst to enable him gather information. So number one, we have use of interviews, that is face-to-face -face interpers uh, interpersonal role for to get information. You can use the document review, that is studying available documents uh, from the former researchers, questionnaires, writing questions down to get answers, observation. So these methods are very common, that is the interview, questionnaires, observation, and document review. Question number 10, A, two marks. What is a utility software? This is a subtopic software in book one and the topic computer systems. So this is a program used frequently by the computer to carry out routine jobs. Rather, utility software is used to manage computer files, diagonalize and repair computer problems and assist in helping the computer to run more efficiently. Then you are supposed to give examples of utility software. So we have the text editors like Notepad, Wordpad. We have sort utilities. We have language translators, merge utility. We have Roda, copy utility, linker, dump utility. You can also add calendar. You can add antivirus. You can add uh, something like uh, the, the backup utilities. So we have list two duties of software developer. This is in book four, the uh, second last topic, careers in ICT. So list duties of software developer. So the duties involve design a program, develop the program, gather information about the existing system, test and debug the program, implement the program, and document the program. Then we have explained the meaning of the following security terms, two marks. We have industrial espionage and piracy. These are under form two, topic, data security and control. So industrial espionage is spying on a computer to get information that can be used to cripple or finish the competitor. Then we have piracy. Piracy is making illegal copies of copyrighted information, software, or data. Simple and clear. So in next class, you can try to uh, ask yourself methods that can be used to curb or prevent piracy. So the cells K3 to K10 of a worksheet contain remarks on students' performance, such as very good, good, fair, and fail, depending on the average mark. Write a formula that can be used to count all students who have the remark very good. So basically, a formula or a function must start with an equal sign. So here we are using count if. So count if the range, then the remark. Very good. You can pause and write that formula or try it. Then differentiate between source program and object program. Differentiate between source program and object program. Two marks. This is 
uh, the third topic, elementary programming principles under the terminologies. So we have source program or source code is the program as written by the programmer using an editor program either in high level or assembly language. Basically, a source code or a source program is the code that is not in machine readable format, must be translated. On the other hand, object program or object code is the translated uh, source program. It is the, the, the program codes in machine readable format. Question number 14. A student represented a budget in the form of a worksheet as follows. So you have A with item, fare, stationary bread, miscellaneous. Then you have B with the amount. So the student intends to have spent half amount by midterm. G uh, given that the value 0 0.5, that is a half, is typed in B9, write the formula that would be typed in cell C2 and then copied down the column to obtain half the value in column B, one mark. So basically, you just type equals B2 multiplied by the dollar sign B9. The dollar sign here shows absolute cell referencing. B, write two different formula that can be typed to obtain the total in, uh, in B6 and then copied to cell C6. So basically, you just type equals to sum, then the range. Alternatively, you, you type equals, then you add them up. Explain binary coded decimal code of data representation. One mark. So this is data encoding system that uses four binary digits to, to represent an individual, uh, that is an individual decimal digit. Then you have B. Write the number 451 in BCD. So basically you write the numbers as I have written here, 451. Then you represent them in terms of their binary in using four digits because here we have talked about it being four digits just like I have projected. Then study the flowchart below and use it to answer question that follows. So basically we have this. So we are starting read x sum equals to 0, n equals to 0, then n equals to n plus 1. Then you go down sum is sum plus 1. For this case here uh, when you enter a certain number, then you have to include these values the way they are set. Then a decision is made. Is n equals to x? If the condition is no, then it goes back to this point. If the condition is yes, then the sum here, the sum here is given. So determine the output from the flowchart if x is 5. So if x is 5, at that instance, sum will be 0, n will be 0. So n becomes uh, 1 because it is 0 plus 1. Then the sum becomes now 0 here plus 1, the one that you get here. Then you will come here and make a decision. Uh, is, is 0, sorry, n is 1. Is n equals to 5? Definitely no. Then it loops again and carries on. So this is what happens. For that case, when x is 5, sum becomes 0 in the first instance until it reaches 5. Remember, x is the end uh, input. So it becomes 1, 1. Then it becomes 3, 2, 6, 3, 10, 5. So these are the values of the sum. These are the values of the n at any given instance. Then when output is 15, sorry, x is, uh, when x is 7, Remember here we have given 15 as the last value here. When it's 7, this is what happens. So you insert 7 there until you get 28 as the last result. Then write the pseudocode. The pseudocode is just the English-like statements or the breakdown of the flowchart. Here you write it in words. So you have start, read x, sum equals to 0, n equals to 0, then repeat because of that arrow that goes back for repetition or iteration. So you have the pseudocode as projected. 
So these are the three program language translators. We usually have an assembler translates assembly language to uh, something a machine can read. We have a compiler. You have seen it translates the entire source code. Then you have the interpreter, which translates the source code line by line. Question 17. Describe three types of validation checks as used in data processing six marks. So when we talk about validation, you are trying to uh, see whether the data entered will be flagged as errors. So how can you prevent the, uh, the, the errors? You use the validation checks. So the first one is range check, which checks the data, whether data lies within the range that you have accepted or set. Prices check, uh, this one, uh, checks that data is there and has not been missed out. That is the presence. We have the length check, checks that the fields are of the right number of characters. If it's 19, it's 19 characters. Type check, checks that the data uh, is of the right, at, uh, check right date and time, date and time number, number. Text, it's correct. Then we have format checks, checks whether data is in the correct format. Question B, a company has opted to store its employees' personal details in a computer system. Describe two software methods that may be used to prevent unauthorized access to these details for marks. So here, we usually have the password, a secret word, as you know. Then we have use user access level, a case where each group is granted different levels of access. We have the administrator and limited accounts. Then we have user access rights. An individual is granted access or denied access to the resources. So depending a session whereby you are the unlimited user, there are some things you cannot do that the administrator will do. C. Describe each of the following data processing modes, real-time and interactive processing. So real-time, uh, it's a time processing. There is a continuous input. Process and output of data is simultaneous upon receipt of the command. Whereas interactive, a computer processing in which the user can modify the operation appropriately while observing the sorts as at critical steps. Then there is an interaction between the system and the user using dialog boxes. State an application area where real-time processing mode is applied. So we have the following uh, booking stuff. We have air, rain booking, medical system, car tracking system, hotel uh, booking system, banking system, etc. Then we have an application question from form two. Study the spreadsheet below showing the student's score in a class. So you have the student name, maths, English, Swahili, total, average, and remarks. Then we, we are supposed to calculate also the maximum and count. Using cell references, write formula stroke function to be entered in one, cell E2 to compute totals. So you will write either a formula or a function. The first one is a function, since we have been asked to write a formula stroke a function. So some range, or you just click, type equals, click the first value, second and third, and press enter. To compute average, the same average, then range, or you take the total divided by three, or the total of individuals into brackets divided by three. Cell E2 to display remarks good if average is greater or equal to 60, fair if average is greater than 50, and fair if otherwise. So you use the if function. So if F2 is greater than 60, you double quote, you, that is good. If uh, F2 is greater than 50, fair, else, that comma there is else, fair. So we have cell E6 to display highest total max. So use the function max, then the range in brackets and press enter. Cell F2 to count the number of students with remarks good. So count if, take the range, then cross the, you cross the, 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 the remark you want, just like I have done there. 
So the next question is, the following two tables, A and B, are related tables in a database. Use them to answer the question that follows. So we have sport code, sport name, soccer, volleyball, basketball with codes 100, 200, and 300. We have table B with sport ID. We have prayer registration number. We have uh, prayer name. Uh, those names that are displayed there. So here the relationship is among uh, uh, sport code and um, sport ID here, which will be uh, that is that will be our uh, one one to many relationship. So we have identified the appropriate primary keys. So we have the prayer registration number and the sport code. Primary key must not accept duplicates. So you can check from the table. Two, name the correct data type for fields. Prayer registration number. This is a mixture of alphanumerics and numbers. So that is text. Sport code. It can also be uh, text since you are not really using it for computation. State the number of fields in table A and table B. So we have this ones. Two and four. State two functions or forms in a database. Number one is data entry or edit and also viewing of records. Question 19. Define the following terms. Computer network. This is form for first topic. It's a collection of two or more computers connected together with transmission media for the purpose of communication and resource sharing. Then you have attenuation. Attenuation is the weakening of signal as distance increases, rather decrease or, or loss of signal strength as it moves along a transmission medium. Signal moderation, this is conversion of data signal to a form suitable for transmission over media. Then outline the purpose of networking. The first one is from the definition, resource sharing. You can share a printer among three offices. Remote communication, distributed processing, cost effective, effectiveness, that is unreliability. You can uh, scrutiny on this using the notes on first topic in form 4. Identify any four elements of elements required to establish and access the internet. This is in form 2, topic internet and emailing. So you have data terminal equipment like laptop, computer, mobile phone. You have transmission media, whether wireless or cable, telecommunication cables, that is a transmission media, satellite, wireless communication, all those are uh, transmission media. And then we have internet service providers and also uh, the software that will be used for that matter. Define the term network topology. Also this one is in form 4. It is a way of a way computers and other devices are arranged in a network or how data is passed from one computer to another. With the need of a diagram, describe a ring topology. That one you can just draw uh, a crossed circuit. That is a crossed circuit loop. Define the term protocol as used um, with internet. It is a set of rules that govern how two computers can send and receive data on a network. Then we have, name the two most common protocols for the internet. Basically, they are transmission control protocol. You can type TCP. And also we have internet uh, protocol, that is the IP. Then we have question 20. Then, we have question number 20. Differentiate between one's complement and two's complement in data representation. So we usually have one's complement, uh, one's complement, a negative number is represented by taking all its bits in the positive number and inverting them. In two's complement, you start with one's complement but add one to the result. In one's complement, the overflow bit is added back to the answer, but ignored in two's complement. Those are the two main 
differences between ones and twos complement. Explain the preference of binary number system over decimal number system in computers. Simply, it is easy to program. Uses states by state, which is 0 and 1, or on and off. Binary can be used to represent all types of data. Using one's complement, subtract. You are subtracting this one from this one. So basically, you arrange them as I have done. Then here, you just take 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. Then take this one here. Remains 1. Then once you do that, So basically here, what you do, 0 minus 0 is 0, then 1 minus 0 is 1. Here, you borrow, it remains 1, so it becomes 10. 10 minus 1, 1. You borrow again here, becomes 10. 10 minus 1, 1. And then you now, at the end of the day, get this answer. You can just pause the video and look at how that one is, uh, uh, that is how that one comes on. So here... Uh, we have now this one as the answer here. So here, convert the the number 21.03125, which is decimal, to binary. So basically what you do, you take the, 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 the integral part, the part with no decimal, you divide by 2 continuously. Then you take the decimal part, you continuously multiply by 2 until you, you get a recurring decimal or you get a, 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 that is the, the, the value 1. Then in the fractional part, the part with the decimal, you read from top, bottom. But the integral part, you read from bottom, top, as indicated. Then perform the following binary operations. So I'm supposed to add this one, this one, and this one. Basically, the easiest way of doing this is to add 2, 2. You add this one to this one, then add this, then add this, or add these two, add these two, bring them together, then you'll get the answer. That one will be uh, very simple for that case. Guys, uh, that is the end of that paper. In my next video, I'll be uh, taking you through paper two. That is the practical a bit of paper too. So I'll be taking you through this question here. Let's see what I'll be doing, uh, taking you through. I'll be taking you through this, uh, uh, that is this this uh, problem here. We shall be solving this. That is uh, uh, the spreadsheet question. I'll also be taking you through how to come up with this wedding card uh, using desktop publishing. Guys, Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe, share, and like my videos.